Hey, Rav Tov, covering my name, Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Uh, a lot of things are happening right now, friends. Uh, uh, as many of you had uh, sent messages to me on our video, Stephen and Yana chat that was just released on Israeli News Live in the wee hours of the morning about General Sala uh, Soleimani, the uh, Iranian general that has been killed by uh, the United States, President Trump ordering an airstrike here, uh, as you can see here on Sputnik News there. At least six killed in a two-car convoy targeted in the U.S. airstrikes north of Baghdad, the reports are saying there. That was actually close to the Baghdad airport. And, of course, General Sala uh, Soleimani was among the dead, uh, one of the highest-ranking uh, not only as a general for the Iranian government, but uh, he is considered the second in command in the entire country of Iran. Uh, Zarif, uh, the foreign minister of Iran, also had tweeted today on Twitter there. He spoke about this strike here. Uh, and, and, and I don't know, if, well, maybe I didn't, I didn't have it up here, but, uh, but he was uh, very upset about this. Uh, basically putting this nearly as an act of war against Iran. And, of course, the tensions are running high, and there is no doubt that this is exactly where it is headed. Now, the only difference is, is I'm seeing that uh, the situation that is on the ground is going to escalate in Iraq as well. If you remember, we shared with you with our Middle East uh, correspondent there that the situation in uh, Iraq was escalating. This is one of the reasons why the U.S. Uh, president had had our forces moved out of northern Syria where the Kurds were in order to allow the Turks to come across the border, do an invasion there that released the ISIS fighters to go inside of uh, Iraq. That seemed to kind of backfire. It seemed like that a lot of those had gotten captured and one of the reasons was, was because of General Soleimani of Iran Quds forces there uh, that had been working with the Iraqis to try to stomp out the ISIS militants. Now I realize, as my own source said, most American soldiers have no clue, even the Air Force has no clue that they are uh, giving air support for ISIS militants on the ground or uh, making certain movements that allows the ISIS militants to move around in different positions there. But there are some that are very much, uh, they're much higher up in the, the uh, whole uh, echelon of this New World Order that know exactly what they're doing and why they are doing it. Uh, that kind of reminds me, I'll just share with you here, uh, General Wesley Clark, uh, if you remember, he spoke about this uh, in an interview uh, just after the 9-11 attacks and how that we were going to war with to take down seven nations in five years. Now, oddly enough, the general that he speaks to there at the Pentagon doesn't seem to know even why we're doing it. There's no evidence. We're just doing it. Well, as he says, you know, uh, it seems like, a, you know, the only thing you have is, is a good hammer. Every problem needs to be a nail. But again, it's a new world order, and these generals may not always be in the loop. Let's l listen in to General Wesley Clark and what he had to say there many years ago about the 9-11 and the war on terrorism. 9-11. About 10 days after 9-11, I went through the Pentagon, and I saw Secretary Rumsfeld and, and Deputy Secretary Wolfowitz. I went downstairs just to say hello to some of the people on the Joint Staff who used, used to work for me, and one of the generals called me, and he said, Sir, you got to... Come in, you got to come in and talk to me a second. I said, well, you're too busy. He said, no, no. He says, we've made the decision we're going to war with Iraq. This was on or about the 20th of September. I said, we're going to war with Iraq. Why? Less than two weeks. He said, I don't know. <laughs> he said, I guess they don't know what else to do. So uh, I said, now, if you think about it, remember what Prime Minister Netanyahu said about 9-11. It was good for Israel because it drew the United States into the war of terrorism. But listen to what else he says. Just as a reminder, the seven nations that had to be taken down, all of them have been taken down with the exception of Iran. And some might argue that Syria has not been taken down as of yet either. But you have to know the bigger picture. Listen to this. I said, well, did they find some information collect, connecting Saddam to al-Qaeda? He said, no, no. He says, there's nothing new that way. They just made the decision to go to war with Iraq. 
he said i guess it's like we don't know what to do about terrorists but we've got a good military and we can take down governments and he said i guess if the only two you have is a hammer every problem has to look like a nail so i came back to see him a few weeks later and by that time we were bombing in afghanistan i said are we still going to war with iraq and he said oh it's worse than that he said he reached over on his desk he picked up a piece of paper he said i just he said i just got this down from upstairs meaning the secretary of defense office today and he said this is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years starting with iraq and then syria lebanon libya somalia sudan and finishing off iran i said is it classified he said yes sir i said i said well don't show it to me and i saw as you can see uh and we followed that very closely now why afghanistan though you have to understand afghanistan just like in south america and central america was a major poppy field industry and cocaine had become the new choice drug here in america and we needed that drugs here in this country to help fund the cash it would be needed to use for the guerrilla warfare and oddly enough even though al-qaeda was the uh, supposed a boogeyman that took down uh, the twin towers they were all al-qaeda saudi al-qaeda nationals uh, which was kind of odd because we didn't go to war with Saudi Arabia, but instead we went to war with Iraq. And while we're over in the Middle East fighting terrorism, we're supplying arms and weapons to Al-Qaeda. It's kind of a strange uh, situation, don't you think? And under Obama's administration, because believe me, I don't think Democrat or Republican really makes a difference in this, whether it be George Bush, Barack Obama, President Bill Clinton, or even Donald Trump. They all are funding these terrorists, these wars that are going on in the Middle East. And probably the presidents are a lot like uh, the generals that were working in the Pentagon. They don't have any idea why we're doing it either. You just need to look to where the New World Order headquarters is, and then you get a better idea of why we are fighting the wars we're fighting. Jerusalem is going to be the headquarters. So now that Soleimani has been killed, uh, and he is the big general for Iran, it's only to help provoke a wider confrontation. Now, granted, the U.S. Embassy was under siege in Iraq and got to do something to put that siege down, and no doubt Iran is being blamed for it, and they probably are guilty for it. As we know, my own source from the Middle East did say that Iran was going to do everything they could in order to cause a, a hard way to go for the Americans because after all the Iranian government had worked with the US in order to overthrow Afghanistan but once George Bush called them the axes of evil they knew the Khomeini knew then that, that Iran was on the chopping block and sure enough that's exactly what happens less than two weeks after 9-11 when General Wesley Clark found out that we were going to war which also included Iran so as we move down on all this, I want to share with you, too, of course, President Trump weighs in on this today, and he speaks about uh, taking out General Soleimani of the Iranian uh, uh, Quds forces there, the elite Quds force, and uh, in the way he portrays him. And he calls him a terrorist. And, you know, I, one thing I have to say, there's no way that, that he doesn't have American blood on his hands as well because we are fighting in the Middle East. The only issue that I have is why are we fighting there in the first place? Why did we ever start a war in these countries here? That's my problem. But as far as Americans, I do care about American soldiers. After all, they're Americans. But I don't appreciate the fact that we are over there fighting in these countries and overthrowing and destroying all of these people's lives in the Middle East either. They're human beings too. Iranians, Iraqis, Syrians, it doesn't matter, they're still human beings. I may not agree with their religious beliefs or their religious philosophies or anything else, but in fact, if anything, I think it has been the uh, Christians over in the Middle East that have been targeted more than anybody else. Kind of makes you wonder, especially in Syria, they really have been taken the beating. And of course, the Yazdis. Uh, the Yazdis are the very group that, that, that hold the tradition that the wise men come from their people to, to, uh, to, to, to bring in the, uh, the, the baby birth of Jesus, to bring gifts, not his birth, but when he's about two years old. 
Isn't it interesting that the very, all the people that are, that are around Christianity are what's targeted by this New World Order initiative that is headed by the elite of Israel. Now that's not the Israeli people. Please keep that in mind as well. Just because a person is Jewish doesn't make a person bad, just like any other thing. I may not agree with their doctrinal views, and I certainly don't. I don't agree with Talmudic views whatsoever. Uh, but there is an elite system in behind all of this that is bent on global domination. And that's why America does exactly what they say. Woof, woof, we will go right along. Don't forget, you have to understand, this is a Talmudic belief that every Jew will have 2,800 slaves. Yes, it is there. Zohar, especially. But anyway, let's listen to what the president has to say on this. Thousands of people and hundreds and hundreds, at least, of Americans. Qasem Soleimani has been killed, and his bloody rampage is now forever gone. He was plotting attacks against Americans, but now we've ensured that his atrocities have been stopped for good. They are stopped for good. Uh, you know, it's funny. When President Trump reads the teleprompter, again, it reminds me of General Wesley Clark and the other generals. I don't think he has the foggiest idea why we took the guy out in the first place. There's just a bunch of uh, people above his pay grade that are telling him what needs to be done, when it needs to be done, and how it's got to be done. Now let's kind of look at the bigger picture of what's happening here in the Middle East. Not only do we have this situation right now that we have just taken out this leader there, uh, and of course, by the way, the situation is still escalating there in the Middle East. Ava uh, Akularayetas also has reported, uh, actually, I was looking at one report here, three, it was three hours ago when I was actually looking at this one right here, another huge explosion in the Sanya area west of Nineveh. That's up there uh, right around the Iraqi-Syrian uh, border. And also, uh, the uh, al Iraqi TV confirms a second U.S. strike in the Tayyi area north of Baghdad, also four hours ago that this took place. And she's also reporting that the Israeli military is on a very heightened alert with many, many uh, air flights that are going on right in the Golan area there on the border between Syria and Israel because they need, they, you know, here's the whole thing. I hate to say it, but this is what they want to happen. I have uh, <laughs> Israeli sources right with Mossad that have shared the information with me what's going to go down uh, in uh, the not so distant future. And I've been told for quite some time now, for over a year, that Iran is on the target list. Syria will crumble. They will take Syria down. Iran will go down. Uh, I have heard that the United States will, will deal with Iran and that Israel and the Saudis would actually help fight Iran, but now they're going to have to fight Iraq because my own source in the Middle East there is now telling me that Iraq was getting out of control. As you can remember, this is one of the reasons why Turkey came into the northern side of Syria, why Trump moved our forces out only temporarily. You know, he made it look like to American people, he's bringing the troops back home. We don't need our troops in Syria anyway. Why are we still there? Looking like he's trying to make, you know, make good on a campaign promise, right? No, it was all staged. I told you before it ever happened. What was it? Either Israel or the Turks, one, are going to go in there and cause the, the liberation of the ISIS fighters that were being held in Kurdish prisons. And they did exactly that. Now, one thing that did backfire is that not as many of them made it into Iraq where they were headed to the basis for their new retraining program to help bring chaos inside of Iraq so that they could regain the full control politically in Iraq. Why? Because there was that general, that Iranian general that's considered to be this bad terrorist who's been fighting against ISIS that worked with the Iraqis to cut ISIS off and put a stop to what they were doing. Yeah, he has fought terrorism for sure, and he's fought al-Nusra, al-Qaeda, he has fought uh, the ISIS militants, and so therefore he's the big bad wolf, no doubt about it. I can't help but wonder, though, if Iran's own uh, 
their own ally, Russia, if they may not have tipped off the United States in that strike. Well, let me explain myself to you why I say that. And some of this stuff, I did this on Fact News Network this morning, but now we can go a little bit better, a little bit better quality, quality audio as well. But I'll sh share with you why. There's new news that is coming out as well that Turkey is actually going to send troops into Libya. Everybody's freaking out. Oh, wow, well, Turkey's uh, Erdogan is exercising his power in the Middle East. No, Turkey is doing exactly what he's told. Why? The United States and Israel know that they're about to go to war with Iran. All right? But it's not just going to be Iran. They're concerned that the Iraqis, it's going to cause a division within the nation there. And part of the Iraqis are going to go to war with Iran to help fight the U.S. So now they have to fight Iraq and Iran simultaneously. Therefore, U.S. assets that are in Libya, overthrowing Libya and making sure we have a good strong foothold in Libya, have to be pulled out, and so therefore they're using Turkey to fulfill the, fill the vacuum over in Libya to keep that country under control as well. After all, Libya is part of that new Silk Road initiative. Don't worry about China. China's going to lay low. China's still got a job to do as well. Now, according to Israeli intelligence sources that I have, they told me that when you see the situation with Iran really get heavily underway, don't worry, there is a pre-planned initiative for Russia to end up striking the United States as an ally to Iran. It won't happen at first, I don't believe. I believe that Russia, Putin, because he is a very close ally to Israel as well, he already knows exactly how long the leash is on his chain. So therefore, he's going to be held back, let Iran completely go down to where they can't get back up again, and then his leash will be cut loose and he'll be allowed to do a strike on the United States. Because after all, he's got to look like he really cares about the Iranian people. Why would he even do it then, when Iran is almost obliterated? Well, it's because he'll be guaranteed so much of the oil reserves of Iran part of his own little empire up there. So he will come to the aid of Iran with a limited nuclear strike in the United States. They need to do something here to really cause chaos, to bring out the FEMA camps. If they haven't already started disarming the nation, which they're going to be able to do a lot of that just through this whole big deal between Trump, the impeachment, and the unrest, and the, and the, and the Second Amendment issues that are going on in this nation, and the fight for being able to keep arms. And the funny thing is, they're going to use the very Republican group to help disarm the nation. And you don't even realize it. We think that the Republicans are there to fight for keeping our guns, right? I think it's going to backfire on us as well. Anyway, let me get back to the part, though. This is what I was told. The Russians will do a limited nuclear strike in this nation that will cause chaos, mayhem, bring down the power grid, everything that will send the, this whole nation into a tailspin. Then they said they're going to allow the Americans to use all their bullets on each other. And, of course, you won't be able to get any more bullets after that. So then, after that's done, of course, the United States is going to strike back on Russia. And as we strike back on Russia and we cripple Russia, we have finally done exactly what the New World Order needed, and that was to destroy nationality. That's one of those elites told me that several years ago that that would be coming as well. So I got that confirmed by my Iranian source, by my Israeli sources. All, these, all the sources that I have coming together are painting this interesting picture to me. I was also told, though, when you see the situation with Iran going chaotic, if you can get away from big cities in America, you better do it, Stephen. And whatever you do, Stay away from the FEMA camps. Of course, my sources also told me about the overtaking of South America. Isn't it interesting? So many Americans that knew these things were coming to America, knew they were going to have forced vaccinations, things like that, they all fled to South America. But the very globalists are down in South America overthrowing all those nations as well. So it did you no good to go to South America. Hey, let's face it, there's only one safe place, and that's in Christ. And this world is going to burn in the not-so-distant future. Please keep that in mind. So, kind of letting you know these things here so we kind of get an idea of what's going on. Also, this little Twitter thing came out as well. This was kind of interesting. They said, what in the world is this in the sky here? Looks like a laser beam to me, if you ask me, some type of laser beam technology, maybe from a satellite that's being used targeting something on the ground. I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. Who really knows about all this? 
So anyway, uh, of course we already know, the U.S. airstrike kills Qasem Soleimani at Baghdad airport, according to the article here on uh, the news right here. It also says, de facto state of war, Del, Del Blasio warns New Yorkers of new reality in the wake of killing of Iran Soleimani. Now we're going to have more terrorism. I guess they're preparing you for these plots. They may be fake, but they're going to tell you that we're going to have more terrorism in the nation, and that's only going to be to justify a war with Iran. I don't even know if Iran will retaliate. I hate to tell you this, friends. Well, I don't want to say I hate to tell you this because I, I hate to see retaliation regardless because it only causes the domino effect, right? But I don't think they will. I think, though, that there will be some staged events to make it look like they retaliated. And I say this because Israel has done, what, over 200 sorties into Syria, killing Iraqis and Iraqi generals and commanders there uh, over, just over in, in the last year? Do you think they're going to come out and fight over one general? I don't think so. Iran is going to have to be pushed to a place to where they're under attack and they will have no choice but to defend themselves. I think that's what it's really going to come down to. Anyway, another, a couple other issues that I wanted to share with you here. This is, this is another very strange thing going on. Uh, I say strange. It's not really strange. Something that's been going on for a long time uh, in Judaism, but uh, 90,000 uh, Jewish people unite at a religious event in New Jersey after, a, after violent attacks. 90,000 Orthodox Jews pa uh, packed the stadiums there. That happens to be the stadium that is used by the, uh, the Giants, the football team called the Giants. I thought that was kind of interesting, especially in light of the fact that we know that the Nephilim bloodline was mixed in with what? The Kohanim and the Levitical bloodlines, and they just happen to be in the giant stadium. Isn't that kind of interesting? At any rate, though, uh, this is a big event there. It says uh, East Rutherford, New Jersey, pr uh, prayers filled MetLife Stadium on New York's Day, uh, New Year's Day, as more than 90,000 Jews came together to celebrate religious event called Siyam Hashas. Siyam Hashas, by the way, uh, this is uh, it's a celebration that is done every seven and a half years, uh, or I shouldn't say every seven and a half years. It's done. It's, it's annually done, but it takes seven and a half years to go through the entire reading of the Talmud. It's like a just like when Christians do the Bible, you, you have, uh, I think in one year you can read the Bible. It takes seven and a half years the way they have it set up to read the entire Talmud. And I can understand that being the case because uh, I think it's like considered 32 or 33 books altogether that you'd have to read in order to do that. So anyway, on December 10th, uh, they, they said they did this in solidarity because uh, of the shootings that have been taking place. The rise of anti-Semitism is on the rise, right? Targeted the kosher market in Jersey City, killing uh, three people. And also on Hanukkah last week, a man attacked five people with a knife at a home at a rabbi in Muncie, New York. And I really hate to see this. I hate to see violence against Jewish people. But one thing I wanted to share with you, there's so much to do when the attack is against the Jewish community, it's anti-Semitism. If you speak against uh, the, 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 these, these racist comments that are, that are perpetrated by, the, by Talmudic ideology uh, of superiority, in other words, uh, uh, the goyim is considered an animal, and, and these rabbis say these things, that's okay to say. You can do that. But if you say anything like that, if you even criticize that, you're considered anti-Semitic for doing so, even if you're Jewish. Or, no, we're just self-hating Jews, right? I don't know. But anyway, I wanted to bring this out, though. Yes, there were those situations that happened, and it was very, very sad to see any type of act of violence against anyone. And that's my point, anyone. Uh, Jersey uh, City shooting is being investigated as an act of domestic terrorism, according to the Washington Post. That's one of the ones they mentioned right there. Also, suspect New York Hanukkah stabbings researched Hitler had two knives in the car. All right? Well, they couldn't do anything about guns on that one, could they? But anyway, listen. But the whole point is, there, if, if it's dealing with the Jewish community, it's anti-Semitism. But what about the other communities? What about the church shootings? And this is the funny thing. We have Jack Wilson, who's being considered uh, called a hero for being able to take out the gunman in this church uh, that happened there in, what was that, uh, uh, they, they made such a big deal over the, the name of the, the, the little uh, community as well. 
uh, something like white, white, let's see, let's see if we get it in here. Armed, even, uh, even in a church, Texas shooting is about a lot more than Jack Wilson's heroism. Um, as I said here, this article here on USA Today uh, basically makes it look like he's not so much a hero. He was trained to do this because he's a former FBI agent, he's a former auxiliary deputy uh, there in Texas. Uh, he owned his own shooting range, etc. Well, you know, the whole point is, is he's active in and he's also an activist for, for being able for people being able to, to having the Second Amendment rights there. Uh, but it's interesting how they belittle that belittle what he did because of his training. Uh, a lot of people have had training on firearms. They should not belittle that. And there were a lot of people there uh, that you know, as we could see in there, that were armed. And believe me, uh, we, uh, I'm just not going to go there anyway. But but you know, here's the thing. When a church gets shot, people get shot in a church, they don't call it anti-Gentilism, do they? And what about in the case here? And I actually have a good friend, his family uh, went to this church there in, the, in Texas there uh, where 26 people were killed. This was back in, uh, that was 2017, I think. Yeah, 2017, November 2017. Uh, I won't speak about the name of the brother that I know there, but he lost his wife, uh, mother, father. Uh, in fact, he had the most victims uh, in this uh, shooting was his family. And, but again, what they don't tell you, and one thing he told me privately, he said, you'll never see it on the news, Steve. He said they, they say it was a self-inflicted gunshot wound that, that, uh, that the guy that shot killed everybody in the church, and that's how he died. He said it wasn't that. He said it was the guy that had the rifle that, that took this guy on uh, that actually took him out. Uh, uh, you know, and but we'll never hear about that man there. You'll never hear about that uh, he actually was the one that wounded him, and of course he died of his gun, of his wound. And again, it was an armed citizen. And they don't talk about him because they can't do a spin on it. Mainstream media can't do a spin on it. But you know, then there's other things as well. If everything is anti-Semitism, but then what about this article right here? Right? This is on City Lab. What new research says about race and police shootings? Two new studies have received long-running debate over how police respond to white criminal suspects versus African Americans. 2.5 times more likely to be shot if you're black. All right? Is that racism? What, what, what do we call that? All right? And uh, according to a new study conducted by Frank Edwards of Red, uh, Rutgers University uh, School of Criminal Justice and Hedwig Lee of Washington University of St. Louis Department of Sociology and Michael uh, Esposoto of the University of Michigan Institute for uh, Social uh, Research, they verified data on police killings from 2013 to 2018 and compiled by the website's uh, fatal encounters. And that's how they were able to come up with the statistics that Two and a half times more likely, if you're a black suspect, you're, you're likely to be shot. All right? And then we have the situations here, like in this one here. This was uh, multiple people killed in a mass shooting in El Paso Shopping Center, which was the Walmart. Uh, what is that considered to be? You know? Now, a lot of these things, there's evidence that seems to suggest that these acts are actually staged. And uh, girl 13 killed in North Carolina mall parking lot shooting. Was that anti-Semitic? You know, the point is, the acts of violence are happening all over the nation on a regular basis. And uh, you can have here the school shootings as well. What is going on? Fears of school shootings uh, hit, uh, hit eight Wisconsin high schools in three days. But some, like I said, some of these things just seem to be a little bit fishy. You know, look, when I was in high school, whew, that was a long time ago. <laughs> lost count how many years ago? Over 30 years ago, right? Uh, we didn't have these things. You didn't have shootings in schools. And I can't help, even, even, I cannot help but believe in knowing people that I know, even in Washington, D.C., that have spoke about these things. I cannot help but believe that some of these things, not all of them, but some of these are being staged events. Maybe real people are dying. I'm not saying that the people didn't die in these events, but maybe they have been staged for the purpose to disarm this nation. Because after all, New World Order, Jerusalem will be the headquarters, 
Right now, what's going on in the Middle East, I've told you before, we know that the United States is going to be taken down. Russia will be heavily hit as well. FEMA camps will open up for the people that have nowhere to go. I was even told they will genocide the American people. Who are they, how are they going to say, when they say genocide, though, who's, who's going to be, who's going to live and who's going to die? I'll tell you something, friends, it's not looking good. It's not looking good. Every day is more and more troubling. Listen, as we close here, uh, somebody had made a comment. My wife was telling me, they said, uh, I'd mentioned Job. And uh, they said, how can you say that Job was resurrected when Yeshua was here? And uh, they said, that's just a conjecture. Okay, if you want to call it a conjecture, we could. But let me just, I want to clarify it. for Maybe just one person that wrote about that. I'm not sure exactly. Uh, this is where Job says this. It's over in chapter 19. Uh, he says here, but as for me, all right, I'll just, let me, let me highlight everything for you here. And uh, uh, maybe it does want to highlight. But as for me, I know that my Redeemer liveth and that he will witness at the last day upon the dust. Now, that's actually not translated correctly. Uh, the, the, this word right here, is like for the latter days, okay? Uh, al Afad Yakum, he will rise up. Uh, he will rise up from the dust, is what it is. At the latter days, you see, because he says, I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he will, at the latter days, upon the dust, he will raise up, all right? And when after my skin this is destroyed, then without my, uh, without, he says, without my flesh I shall see God. And, uh, no, it's not exactly like that either. But anyway, uh, let me let me give it to you. Uh, I'm just going to have to read The King James Version Bible actually did translate that better. I hate to say it, but... And I can tell you why. Uh, the reason being is because when you're dealing with any types of scriptures that obviously are speaking to the Messiah or evidence of the Messiah, we will find evidently that those scriptures intentionally are not translated properly. I hate to say it, but it's just the way it is. Okay. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. See? And I, and I just, uh, you know. Anyway, for, let me back up. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that... Uh, he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. Actually, that, that's not exactly worded the right way, but it is the last, at the last days. Uh, a, a fire could be the dust or it can be the earth. That's true, but it does say yakum. He will rise up, all right? And though after my skin worm destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. So he refers... To the Mashiach, the Messiah, who's going to raise, he's literally talking about the time of Christ, right? Whom I shall see for myself, mine eye shall behold, and not another, though my reins be consumed within me. In other words, he's saying the eyes that he had right there are going to come back together, and he's going to see him with those eyes. And let me tell you something. That's why when Jesus took the spit on the ground and made that clay and put it on the blind man's eyes, he was showing you that he is the creator. He's the same God that made Adam from the dust of the earth, right? So he's showing you there, whom I shall see for myself and mine eyes shall behold and not another. Not another what? Not another set of eyes. Because, in other words, all the, all, even though his body is consumed and everything, he knew all the elements would come back together. Now, the reason we know it's Christ is because he calls him his Redeemer. Christ does the redemptive work. Okay? But you should say, what? okay, then he goes in, whom I shall say, okay, not another. Now, that, that's the part, that's just this little bit of verses there that he talks about that. I just wanted to share that with you guys because some people get a little confused and they're like, well, where do you get that from? And, and I almost have it memorized, but not quite. A lot of scriptures like that for me. I just memorize many, many scriptures. Anyway, we love you. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support of this ministry. We really appreciated the, the kindness that you showed in 2019. 
we were able to go through 2019. We're in 2020. We don't know what's going to happen next, uh, but be praying for us. And thank you for your kindness to this ministry, IsraeliNewsLive.org. Shalom.